Hey, what is up guys? Smurfy back for another video and today we're going to be doing Green White Humans. Uh, a while back I did a video featuring um, the new Hidden Herbalist when it was spoiled and I said that I thought it was really good in modern and I made like a draft humans list and I felt like playing a modern deck so I thought why not give that deck a go. I've made some changes um, mainly on the mana base. Uh, the old mana base was just incorrect. I copied it from the wrong deck, so it was like just the wrong mana base, but it doesn't really matter. Uh, so we're playing four Cavernous Souls just because we're literally every creature in our deck is a human. Um, so Cavernous Souls is great against counter, counter magic decks, and also it's just really good fixing. Two Horizon Canopy just because it can draw you cards late game, um, so if you flood out, then that's fine. One Path to Ex uh, sorry, one Planes because of things like Path to Exile, or sometimes you just need to fetch a basic because you were worried about your life total. Uh, three Temple Gardens and then nine Fetches. We're playing nine Fetches because we're playing Hidden Herbalist. I don't know if nine is enough, um, but I guess we'll find out. And uh, for one drops, we're playing Boris Elite, just a one mana three three most of the time. Um, and it's just a human as well, so it's great. Uh, four Champion of the Parish, just one of the best human one drops um, in modern. And two Kithian, so you can play more Kithian. Um, I think Kithian's really strong in this deck, especially with Burning Trees and Hidden Herbalist. You should be able to flip this on turn uh, three fairly consistently. But I don't want to get like stuck with a bunch of bunch of them in my hand, so I only played two. You could probably get away with three, but um, yeah, we're just playing two for now. And for Experiment One, Experiment One is probably weakest in this deck, uh, just because we just don't have very the creatures don't get that very uh, very big, but but. But using things like Thalia's Lieutenant will pump it uh, for the Remove the Countess as well. So it's not just like uh, you're re uh, relying on the Evolve to get the counters. You can actually just get them from things like Thalia's Lieutenant. And then we're playing uh, 3 Thalia, uh, the actual Legendary one. The reason I'm choosing to play this Thalia is because there's a lot of uh, things like Burn on Modo. And there's also just a lot of um, Grixis Death Shadow decks. And the Grixis Death Shadow deck wins by using its very efficient one mana spells. Things like... Thought Seize and Fatal Push and even things like Thought Scour. And if you're making these cards cost 2 mana, they're significantly worse. Like making a Anger of the Gods 4 mana is really good, but making a Thought Scour 2 mana is just like, it just makes Thought Scour absolutely awful. Um, then we're playing 4th Alex Lieutenant, um, we're all, they're all humans, so pretty easy fit in the deck. Uh, 4 Hamlet Captain, again, pretty much the same thing. And then 4 Mayor of Averbrook. Again, just pumps up our uh, humans. And then the uh, Burning Tree and Hidden Herbalist package. It's worth noting that the only cards that can come off these combo off the combos are Hamlet Captain, Mayor, and Experiment One. But I still think that between those it's just worth worth having them in there just for the uh, potential explosive starts. And they were playing for Path to Exile, it hits Death Shadow, hits Gurmag Angler, hits Tassiger, uh, hits Tarmogoyf, just it's just the best removal spell, um, especially for this deck. Sideboarding, we've got four Rest in Peace. A lot of people using Graveyards at the minute. A lot of people are actually playing uh, Living End or looking into Living End because I think it's got a good matchup against Grixis Shadow or other Death Shadow decks. So that's the reason I think people are playing it and Rest in Peace is good against them. And it's good against um, things like Traversy Ovenworld so they wouldn't have Delirium. It's good against Snapcaster Mage. good against Colligan's Command because they can't get anything back. Two Kusali Pride Mage, just as a generic card to beat artifacts and enchantments. You, uh, I did originally have Disenchant, but if we're playing white, you surely just want uh, Pride Mage over it. There are reasons, obviously, that Disenchant is better, but I think overall, uh, Kusali Pride Mage is just better for us. Three Stony Stones for Pesky Artifacts, three Core Firewalkers for Burn Decks, and three Valorous Stance. So the reason I'm playing Valorous Stance is I originally had... Uh, I can't remember the card in the name... The name of the card. Um, it was XL Target Black or White Permanent. No, Black or Black or Red. Sorry. Um, and I just think that Valor Stance basically does the same thing in those matchups. So the the reason you bring in Celestial Purge is the name of the card, I think. So you use it to kill Tassiga, Death Shadow, Gurmag Angler, and Valor Stance kills all three of those as well, as well as having uh, the option to kill Tarmogoyfs and to also make your creature indestructible. So I think that, unfortunately you don't exile it like Celestial Purge. Celestial Purge is exile a black or red permanent, so you can exile their shadow and then they can't get it back with Colligan's Command. But on the upside of Valorous Stance is it just has more versatility against things. Like if your opponent has a board wipe, you can at least save one guy. So if you can save like a champion of the parish with a couple of counters on, then you can still start hitting with more damage. And also it hits Tarmogoyf. So I think it's pretty close between the two cards, but I, I just want to try Valorous Stance. I think it's fine. Uh, so that is the deck. Thanks for watching and we're going to go into round one. Peace. 